Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for insightful analysis and enlightening discussions. I'm Michael Bull, your host to the world of commercial real estate. Today we're going to cover something of importance to everyone, and that is getting your stuff, right? Getting your stuff when you want it, where you want it, right? And you know, in this Jetson society that, that we live in today, you know, everyone wants their stuff. We want it when we want it, and we want it fast. Well, that's part of what's powering logistics and industrial real estate. So today we'll talk about logistics. We'll talk about the industrial real estate market. And please welcome my first guest. It's Ryan Severino. Ryan is senior economist with Reese, and Reese covers the investment market and the performance of the commercial real estate markets all throughout the country. Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Hello, Michael. Thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure. We appreciate you calling in from uh, New York today. And if you can, to start us out, how has the U.S. industrial sector performed year to date this year? You know, I would say that the industrial sector has had a pretty good run thus far in 2014. For uh, the warehouse distribution subsector, vacancies down to about 11.3 percent, which is a post recession low. Vacancy continues to fall on a quarter to quarter basis, which is great. Rental growth continues to accelerate with asking and effective rents both growing faster than 2% over the last 12 months. So all that's really good news. I'd say for the flex R&D subsector, vacancies down to 13.1%, which is also a post-recession low. Rent growth ex- is accelerating here as well. Asking and effective rents both grew by about 0.6% during the third quarter, which is you know, easily the fastest pace that we've seen since the recession. So on the fundamental side, we're, we're really seeing fairly consistent improvement across both of the subsectors uh, through the third quarter of this year. Are these improvements the best you've seen uh, in, in how many years? You know, at least since the recession. I mean, yeah. the recession really hit all property types, uh, including industrial. But I would say this is uh, consistently the best performance that we've seen out of industrial since before the downturn. Okay. And, and we all know these big warehouses are doing well, these distribu- distribution centers uh, for the online sales. But what about manufacturing? What's about some of the other types of industrial properties? What's, what's doing well and what's lagging a little? You know, I'd say all of them are, are, are doing well to varying degrees. It's not universally consistent, but I'd say if you look at the major segments that we discussed, warehouse distribution, flex R&D, they're both performing well. I'd say even on the manufacturing side, we haven't seen as strong of a recovery as we've seen in the other subsectors. But even there, with the return of some manufacturing activity to the United States and then a lot of you know, big companies that are interested in setting up operations, especially in the right-to-work states in the South, we've definitely seen even a bit of a resurgence in the manufacturing subsector. So I'd say the high tide is raising all of the various subtypes of industrial properties right now. It might not be raising them all at exactly the same rate, uh, but it is uh, pretty much a driver of, uh, of all the subtypes right now. And I'd say that's largely attributable to the strength uh, of the economy thus far. Okay. And what about geography? Is, is all the growth near the uh, ports and the major cities, what do you see there? You know, generally I would say yes. The best performance that we've seen for warehouse distribution during this recovery uh, has predominantly been the big port markets, you know, like Los Angeles, uh, or the real big distribution markets, you know, like Chicago, Atlanta, places like that. The one caveat to that I would say is is somewhat interestingly, uh, we've seen Kansas City and Memphis uh, sometimes show up, uh, let's say, among the best uh, top five, top ten best performing cities, and that's because they're both pretty well connected to air transport in, in ways that they often are not competing with uh, civilian airliners for, for competitive space in those markets. And so uh, they've been a little bit surprising, but it makes sense when you think about the air linkages that they have. I mean, at some point, they're probably going to rename Memphis FedEx anyway, so uh, I think that one makes sense. But even Kansas City has really strong linkages to air transportation and not competing with a big civilian airport. And I'd say, you know, on the flex R&D side, you know, we've really seen the technology-oriented markets performing well, especially in places like Northern California. I mean, those uh, those submarkets with, with very tech-centric uh, tenants are, are definitely taking the lead there. Okay. And is this improved performance, is it limited to the, the larger assets and the larger properties, or are we seeing improvement also in some of the midsize and, and smaller industrial facilities? Uh, you know, I think it's akin to what we were, we were talking about with the subtypes before. The, the high tide is raising all of the ships, just not at exactly the same rate. So I would say that generally we are seeing an outperformance from the larger properties. And I, I think that sort of breaks along class lines as well. We've seen Class A space. 
which tends to be newer and larger, generally outperforming the market. And, you know, most of the construction recently that we've seen has been in these larger buildings, some of them those mega distribution centers. So there's obviously a correlation there between the newness of the building uh, and, and the class of the building. So I would say even though uh, those larger properties charge less on a per square foot basis, their rents have been growing a little bit faster than the rest of the market, just because that's where we're seeing, uh, we're still seeing the concentration of demand these days. Okay, and we're talking with Ryan Severino, senior economist with Reese, and we're talking about industrial real estate in the U.S. And Ryan, what do you expect moving forward? I mean, uh, this is all good news. Uh, Should this continue, uh, this growth uh, with rates and occupancy? I say yes. Uh, We expect, you know, for both warehouse distribution and flex R&D, the vacancy rates will continue to fall and at an accelerating rate. We also expect that rental rates will continue to grow at an accelerating rate. So I'd say, you know, as the economy continues to expand, which, you know, we, we definitely feel favorable, favorable about that for the balance of this year and then on into 2015, I think industrial is really poised well to benefit from this. So I'd say over the next few years, we expect vacancy for warehouse distribution to fall probably, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 basis points overall while, while rents grow, you know, maybe 25 to 3% uh, per year over that interval. I'd say for flex R&D, probably uh, a fall in vacancy of about 170, 180 basis points over the next few years, uh, while we expect rents to grow by, by a little bit less than warehouse distribution, maybe more like 2 to 2.5% per year over that horizon. But I think both uh, subsectors will see rents grow in excess of inflation. I'd say that's that's good news for investors and landlords. Yeah, that's very good news. I think they're out there doing the Snoopy dance right now. <laughs> 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 well, what, how are new deliveries impacting the market? Uh, you know, it seems like we didn't have any new construction for a while in the downturn, and, it, and it's picked up. Uh, has industrial really picked up? What are the levels you see? Yeah, I, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. I'd say on, on the warehouse distribution side, you know, we expect somewhere in the neighborhood, you know, in the major markets that we track, somewhere in the neighborhood of probably about 65 million square feet of, of space to come online this year, maybe say another 55 million for next year. So that's, that's a significant escalation relative to where we were just a few years ago, where the market was probably building, you know, more like 20 to, to 30 million or so. Uh, square feet per year. And, and even on the flex R&D side, obviously that's not as big of a market, and I, I, would, I would argue that's probably not as hot as warehouse distribution right now, but even there, you know, we probably expect to see about 3.5 million, million square feet developed this year, maybe another 5 million or so next year in our major markets. And that, again, that's a ramp up from where we've been over the last few years, where the market was maybe building 1 to 3 million square feet per year, something like that. Yeah, and that's good news for industrial. That's good news for for jobs and everything else. So this fifty five million to sixty five million a year of of new delivery. How does that compare to pre recession years? Are we back you to know, it, the good old days? Or <laughs> we're not quite back there yet. I would say you know we're we are definitely trending in the right direction, but we're we're not quite as frothy as we were before the downturn. But you know this is the one property type that I think. Uh, except for maybe apartments, which we're, we are already at the stage where uh, construction is, is, is you know, reaching historical levels. Uh, this is probably the next property type where we're going to see uh, construction activity start to push uh, those pre-recession highs again. So while we're not quite there yet, uh, there is, uh, there's a significant chance uh, that sometime over the next few years that we start to push back toward those levels. Okay. And how much of this new space, uh, this new construction is spec, is speculative that, you know, they don't have tenants for it yet? You know, it really differs from market to market. I'd say in some markets, especially with uh, some of these sort of mega distribution centers, it, it's fairly speculative. I, I'd say, uh, you know, in, in some of those, in some markets around the country, we're seeing the majority uh, of space, or at least a significant percentage of space, without kind of pinning it down to the decimal point, be speculative, because I do think this is the one property type where people do feel relatively optimistic about the fortunes. You know, I, I would say apartment had been the property type for the last few years where you were more inclined to see spec development. I'd say this is probably the next property type in line where you're going to see more of that. So there are some markets around the country where we're seeing you know, virtually no new spec development, but then there are uh, some interesting pockets of activity, sometimes off the beaten path in ways that you wouldn't expect, where we are seeing fairly significant uh, speculative development. So I'd say it really varies, but, but more, I think, uh, than we've seen in the last few years. And, and uh, again, maybe with the one exception uh, of apartment, more than we're definitely seeing in other property types right now. Yeah, that's interesting because, 
you know, we, we all want our stuff fast, don't it? Don't we? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and we've got to have the, the warehouse. We've got to have the dis- distribution. I can't say the word today. Uh, <laughs> space. And we've got to have it uh, more of it, don't we? Absolutely. I, I'd say that that is a trend that, I mean, that's really Pandora's box. We are we are not closing that. I mean, I myself just purchased something uh, on Monday night that's going to show up at my house uh, sometime today or tomorrow. I mean, it doesn't get too much faster than that. At some point, we'll move to 24-hour delivery, but uh, we're not quite there yet. But still, a couple days is, is pretty darn good in, it is in fast. 2014. Well, stay with us. We'll have more from Ryan Severino. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Brokerage, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive suite of powerful commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R-E-A-L-N-E-X. Sozo Web Hosting and Cloud Solutions, secure, reliable, and worry-free. Visit sozo.com. That's S-O-Z-O dot com. FIU, Florida International University. Earn your master's in real estate online in as little as 10 months. Visit FIUonline.com. And by France Media, providing exposure to the world of commercial real estate. Visit francemediainc.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional podcasts, videos, or blogs, visit CREshow.com.